Hi, welcome to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, we're going to continue on in our Ruckus IoT Controller Series. Uh, originally, we looked at what's in the box. We looked at the IoT module and how to connect that to uh, various uh, access points. Uh, in the last episode, we talked about how to install the uh, Virtual Ruckus IoT Controller Server software in conjunction with running Virtual Smart Zone. Um, and so we got that set up and running, and now we need to add our access points into that into that um, server, right? And so there's really two ways to do that. Uh, the most preferred method is with uh, DHCP option 43. So you're probably familiar with option 43 from you know pointing the access points at a uh, at a virtual smart zone or a zone director or something like that. Uh, so in this case, we're using rather than using sub option three or sub option six, we're using sub option 21. Um, and so we'll set up option 43 on the DHCP server and set option 21 to be the IP address of the vRiot server, which is what we set up in the previous video. Um, it could be by IP address, it could be by a fully qualified domain name, but this is the mandatory sub option. The optional sub option is a sub option 21, which is used to set the uh, control VLAN for the IoT da uh, control data. Um, now I will warn you in the in the current versions of the uh, VRIDE server at least, if you're using this this um, control VLAN, this option 22, then that uh, the VRIDE server needs to be on that VLAN. If you use the default VLAN or the the management VLAN of the access point, then you can route to a um, a VRIDE server that's off your subnet. So just be forewarned, but that's an optional parameter. Uh, but in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to use the command line uh, and the IOTG uh, MQTT broker IP command in order to statically assign uh, the uh, IP address to that controller. So this is not the preferred method to do it, but this is the easy method just to show you for demonstration purposes. So let's have a look at that. So the first thing we'll do is log into the uh, into the VRIDE server uh, and have a look at... Um, Make sure those APs do not show up already. So, um, right. So if I look under IoT APs, I've got no gateways available here. Um, and so once we configure the AP, it's going to show up here as unapproved, and we'll need to go through that approval process. So what we're going to do is we're going to SSH into the AP. Um, we'll log into that AP. And then we've got a few new commands. Um, so uh, the, the reason we need the specific version of Virtual Smart Zone is it upgrades the access point software to give us access to uh, a set of commands called IOTG. So if we do a um, help get IOTG, um, then there's several new commands um, for for enabling the IoT service, for garbage collection, for uh, things like Zigbee Channel and Zigbee Pan and and log level, etc. Uh, but the one we really need here is um, there's a get and a set. So basically, um, there's a set equivalent to every get command. So we are going to get IoTG or set IoTG MQTT dash broker IP. And then we're going to point it to the IP address of our vRiot server. So 192.168.1.136 in this case. So once that's done, if we go back over and refresh the screen here, we now see our uh, 192.168.1.18 AP um, sitting here in unapproved state. Okay, so we could have pre-approved that. So if we wanted to pre-approve APs as they come in, you can do a single or you could do a batch, and it's just by MAC address of the uh, of the um, of the IoT AP, right? So we could have done that as a single, or we could have uploaded a CSV template file um, to to pre-approve if you have many APs to do at once. But in this case, um, we're just gonna we're just going to approve this. So if I click on this access point, it pulls up this submenu here on the side. And uh, all we're going to do is we'll do an approve and apply that. Um, 
and uh, so that's going to uh, going to approve that. So it now says the status now changes to online, right? So the other thing you probably want to do here is you want to choose some kind of mode, whether you're running Zigbee or BLE uh, or Zigbee AA. So you know we'll put it in Zigbee mode, for example. Um, and that's that's really it. So uh, since I changed the mode as well, I'm going to restart the uh, the IoT services right in order for that to change over. And in the next videos, you're going to see how to add uh, BLE devices and how to add Zigbee devices in here. Uh, but this is really all there is to it. So once you've approved that device uh, and brought it online, um, then um, then you can set it for a mode, whether it be Zigbee or BLE, and then you can start scanning for your devices or or adding the uh, adding the services in. But that's it. So you know you could do it with uh, with um, DHCP option 43 with a sub option 21, or you can do it from the command line. But of course, the preferred is DHCP. Okay, so uh, I'll see you next time and have a great day.